Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of Medicine Mansour University. Let us try to answer some MCQ in gynecology. This is a quiz of 10 multiple choice questions. Choose the one best response. Let us start with the first one. What is the most likely denominator in the formula general fertility rate? Again, what is the most likely denominator in the formula general fertility rate? A. Total live birth. B. Total live birth and still birth. C. Total mid year population. D. Total mid year population of women of reproductive age group. E. Mid-year population of 15 to 45 year age group married women. Choose the one best response. The one best response here is D. Total mid-year population of women of reproductive age group. Somebody may be confused with D and the E. Yeah, the difference is D is talking about mid-year population of women of reproductive age group, while E is the same also age group, reproductive age group, which is 15 to 45, but for married women, this is the difference. The wrong is here related to married woman. So, the one best response here is total mid-year population of women of reproductive age group, regardless married or not. Okay? I hope you understand the difference here. Okay. Next, the last step in estrogen census requires the following enzyme. The last step in estrogen senses require the following enzyme A. 5 alpha reductase B. 21 hydroxylase C. 17 hydroxylase C. 11 beta hydroxylase E. Aromatase Choose the one best response. The one best response here is E. Aromatase enzyme. Next, a 39-year-old woman had pelvic discomfort for over a month, along with 5 kg weight loss, nervousness, and excessive sweating. An ultrasound examination showed a 10 cm cystic and solid ovarian mass. The mass was removed, and on gross pathologic examination, there was hair, sepum, and the prominent tooth-like structure. Which microscopic finding is most likely to be seen in this biopsy sample? A. Neuroendocrine cells B. Thyroid follicles C. Trophoplastic cells D. Yolk sac remnant E. Neurological cells Choose the one best response. The one best response here is thyroid follicle. So B, thyroid follicle. Why? Because there is here manifestation of thyrotoxicosis. And this is related to the ovarian tumor, what's called stroma ovarii. It happens with teratoma, as you see here, the case is a case of ovarian teratoma containing the mass containing the hair, sepum, and the prominent tooth-like structure. But also there is clinical features of thyrotoxicosis like weight loss, nervousness, excessive sweating. Okay, so 
the microscopic finding most likely to be seen in this biopsy sample is thyroid follicle. I hope it is clear enough. Next, the following is the main androgen produced by the ovary. The following is the main androgen produced by the ovary. A. Testosterone. B. Androstenedione. C. Dihydrotestosterone. D. Dehydroevandosterone sulfate. E. Dehydroevandosterone. Choose the one best response. The one best response here is B. Androstenedione. Dione. 50% produced in the ovary of androstene dione. Okay. Next, a 28-year-old present, a 28-year-old woman present with painless vulvar ulcer, with painless swelling of the regional lymph nodes. What is the most likely diagnosis? Again, 28-year-old woman presents with painless vulvar ulcer with painless swelling of the regional lymph node. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Chlamydia infection. B. Genital herpes. C. Gonorrhea. D. Cephalus. E. Monelial infection. Choose the one best response. One best response here is D. Cephalus, of course, with characteristic painless ulcer at the vulva and also painless enlargement of the regional lymph nodes. Next, a 46-year-old woman attends to attends the gynecology clinic complaining of heavy menstrual bleeding and intermenstrual spotting of eight month duration the hemoglobin is 11 gram per deciliter an ultrasound scan demonstrates no obvious abnormality what other investigations is required to reach the diagnosis a coagulation screening b diagnostic stroscope c endometrial biopsy D, serum FSH level, E, serum PSH level. Choose the one best re response. The one best response here is C, endometrial biopsy, of course, to reach the diagnosis in such a case. Okay. She is above 40. She is complaining of irregular bleeding. So, endometrial biopsy is needed to reach a diagnosis. Okay. Next, a 29-year-old woman presents with bilateral nipple discharge, no breast masses. She has a history of schizophrenia and mildly elevated prolactin level. What is the most likely cause of hyperprolactinemia? Again, a 29-year-old woman presents with bilateral nipple discharge, no breast masses. She has a history of schizophrenia and mildly elevated prolactin level. What is the most likely cause of hyperprolactinemia? A. Medication side effect. B. Renal disease. C. Prolactin-producing pituitary adenoma. D. Breast tumor. E. Thyroid dysfunction. Choose the one best response. Of course, the one best response here is A, medication side effect, because we know that some medication are the causes of hyperprolactinemia, as that for treatment of schizophrenia and the antidepressant and, and some anticonvulsant and so on. So, A is the right answer or the one best response medication side effect. Next, a 17-year-old girl attends the gynecology clinic with a history of excessive vaginal bleeding associated with clots during menstruation for the past six months. There is a history of 
easy bruising. There is a significant pallor. Examination of the abdomen is unremarkable. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Adenomyosis. B. Bleeding disorder. C. Endometrial carcinoma. D. Fibroid uterus. E. Endometritis. Choose the one best response. The one best response here is B. Bleeding disorder. She has a pallor, bruises, ecchymosis. Okay? In such young age, all this denoting this is a bleeding disorder. Next, a 25-year-old woman gets admitted for hysterectomy for her prolapsed uterus. She was given birth to five children with a period of eight years. Weakness of which muscle leads to her prolapsed uterus? A. Coccygeus. B. Deep transverse brinii. C. Elevator inai. D. Superficial transverse brinii. Brinii. E. Gluteus muscle. Choose the one best response. The one best response here is elevator in I. C. Yes. Go to the next, please. A 26 year old woman felt sharp pain at her vaginal region. She also noticed that there is was a small ulcer on the external surface of her left labia. This wasn't the first time that she had an ulcer around her vaginal region. This recurrent ulcer took more than a week to heal. What is the most likely causative organism for her ulcer? A. Human immune deficiency virus. B. Tribonema pallidum. C. Hepatitis B virus. D. Trichomonas vaginalis. E. Herbis simplex virus. Please choose the one best response. The one best response here is E. Herbis simplex virus. Yeah. Herbis simplex virus is the one best response. Okay. Because she has an ulcer. This ulcer is recurrent and is painful also. And the heal is spontaneously after one week. Okay. All these are characters of the herpetic ulcer. Of course, associated with sharp pain at the vaginal re region. This is the last question here in this quiz. Out of 10, tell me what's your score. Okay. This picture showing my box. I have six books published on Amazon, textbook, obstetric, textbook, gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, medical disorder in pregnancy, and the gynecologic oncology book. I write the link for my site on Amazon in a comment, and also I write link of my YouTube channel where you can find more quizzes and more lecture in OB Guide. Thank you, everybody, and my best wishes for all of you.